one covers New Hampshire like we do. We're WMUR News 9. Dozens of people have been working to free Ward Bird. Tonight, there are official steps in that direction, the development since we first brought you the story. And everyone, support is growing, and the movement to free Ward Bird is taking a big step. Now that a lawmaker is vowing to try to change the law that put the Malton Borough man in prison. We first told you about the father of four last night. Ward Bird just began serving a mandatory three to six years in prison for criminal threatening. Supporters call that sentence unjust, saying that Bird was within his rights when he waved a gun at a woman who went past his no trespassing signs right onto his property. Chris Sakakini live now with the new developments in this case. Kriya? Well, the state rep that covers Moulton Borough says she'll introduce legislation next week to change the criminal threatening law. We also know the governor's office and executive council members have received emails asking for Ward Bird to be pardoned, a process that has to start with an application from Bird himself. In the meantime, we're learning a bit more about his brief history with the law. Bold and bright, free Ward Bird stickers have emerged and petition signatures are growing. Friday, Bird supporters learned their state representative, Betsy Patton, would be advocating for his pardon from prison. Thank you all for contacting me with your concerns regarding Ward Bird. And friends say they'll continue to use the power of the pen. My hope is that we... Uh flood the prison with so much mail that they, they have to add staff so but Ward's three to six year prison sentence for criminal threatening with his gun on his own property isn't the first time he's come up against law enforcement in 2002 he was fined for unauthorized use of firearms for being in a compact part of Moulton Borough, discharging a pistol without written permission of the chief of police bird paid a four hundred eighty dollar fine and his wife Virginia says it was an accident while bird was target practicing. Friends, even the Moulton Borough High School principal, stand by Bird's character. He's a Boy Scout leader. He has mentored Eagle Scouts. You know, when my daughter sleeps at their house, I don't worry about her safety. The question in supporters' minds continues to be why, if Bird was on his own property, did he not have the right to present his weapon to a woman who was trespassing? But you really have to look at what the jurors are hearing, the totality of the information in order to get something like this. Penny Dean, a gun rights lawyer, says the victim in this case told the jury that Bird pointed a gun at her and yelled, get the expletive off my property. Dean says the nature of the alleged exchange plays a large role in the conviction. Because you can't take these things in a vacuum. Nothing happened that day was in a vacuum. And Bird's wife tells us she is confident her husband never pointed his gun at the woman on their property, but simply took it out of his holster. She also says Ward Bird rejected an initial plea deal. Prosecutors said he could have walked free if he pled guilty to a lesser charge, but he went to trial hoping a jury would find him innocent. Reporting live, Kriya Sakakini, WMUR News 9. Now, the state Supreme Court upheld Ward Bird's conviction after taking a look at his appeal. It noted some specific points about the case in its decision. It said a person does have the right to use non-deadly force on their own property to terminate a criminal trespass. However, the court said Ward Bird knew the woman was around in the area because his niece had called him to tell him the woman was heading his way and looking to find the property near his home. 